Well, still discussing the courts, a Delta State High Court is adjourned to the 28th of September, a suit filed by Chief Ayiri Emami, seeking to stop the coronation of Omoba Sola Emiko as Olu of Wari. Emami is also challenging his suspension as Prime Minister of Wari Kingdom of Vietnam George Reports. There is traffic around the premises of the Judiciary High Court of Justice, Wari Delta State, amid heavy security presence. Security operatives stood at the main entrance and barred journalists from covering the proceedings of the court. When the door flung open, both counsel addressed journalists. The case of Ajire Mami is very simple. That the Gidwari, the first ruling house, has no power to suspend him. That they don't have the power. That is his case. And there's no other person that can do the work for Lubushere while he's alive. That is just his case. So long as anybody who wants to go ahead, we wish him well. But what we want is that let peace come to the Shekiri Kingdom. There were various motions for parties seeking to be joined in the suit. In the circumstance, some of the motions were served this morning on the parties. So they needed some time to study the motion very well. My prayer for the case is that the Shekiri nation should move forward. Should move forward. In the meantime, some youth leaders are speaking on developments concerning the Olu of Wari stool. In the much talked about declaration of Post 1 to the 1979 edit, the most important instrument of that declaration is the position of the oracle. The oracleist unanimously endorsed Prince Shola Emiko as the one, the choosing one to occupy the throne of the Gamer of Wari Kingdom. Instead of screening a candidate that was brought forward before you, you went ahead to disqualify such candidate. And it was based on this exhibition of power that it does not possess that led to his suspension. And I want to put it on record today that Ayirmi Mami, who is no longer a chief for now because I cannot address him as a chief, remain and stand suspended. Justice Agboje Veronica adjourned the case to the 28th of September. However, the Olu Advisory Council had earlier fixed the 21st of August as date for the coronation of Omoba Shola Emiko as 21st Olu of Wari. Ovietime George, Arise News. Well, for more on these stories, let's bring in our eyes analyst, uh, Dr. Sam Amadi. Well, he joins us now to look at all of this. I want to start with the last story that we've just seen right there. Quite curious, the fact that the coronation has been placed for the 21st of this month. But, of course, the court has adjourned the case to the 24th. 28th. 28th. 28th of September. September. What does this mean, really? Does this mean that uh, the battle will continue after the coronation or there will be no coronation at all, really? Well, ideally, uh, the, 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 the fact that the, the case exists doesn't necessarily amount to maybe necessarily a restraint of the subject matter. So what that means is that maybe it will go ahead. But oftentimes, the best thing is to recognize that because the, the, the relief sought includes nobody should coordinate anyone. And some of the officers who are involved in the cabinet who are involved in deciding who should be the next law for it, we are listed and asking the court to stop them from taking action and ever Coordinating anyone until we determine the question of who has right to what, who ought to, who is next to the Olu, whether it's the plaintiff as he's claiming, and whether some chiefs can so, so, so there's a dispute around that issue. Now, with the way the courts are joined, and they can't blame the court because, uh, like they said, several motions at any time, by the way, the courts are going on vacation. And so the implications is that look, the coronation will go ahead. Now, yeah. it has implications for the just of the suit because ultimately by the time the question is settled and let's, I, I let, let's assume it was a lawful you know selection it means that either you you will be forced with fit accompli or you have to undo you know uh, and then there's the no uh, interlocutory to stop the coronation from going yeah, really. on so it will yeah, go exactly. all right, it will go ahead, yeah. all right. Uh, if we have time we'll get back to this question of a law of worry but let's talk about 
the super cop, uh, Kiari. Uh, it's looking like the U.S. is making do with just getting Kiari detained while police carries out their investigation. Uh, but the IGP has immediately replaced Kiari. I thought you approved your, your regarded innocent on proving otherwise. And then, of course, the fact that this thing, report, came out on April 29. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility that the police here didn't know about it? You know, those two... Uh, okay, issues. first is that the IG acted properly in relieving the uh, super Kiri. cop, as you say, Kakari. It's not a, a, a verdict of guilt. It's part of procedural you know, issues. For example, even in public service, if you're interdicted, which means there is some evidence, prima facie, that you ought to answer to. You are normally removed for three reasons. One, not to impede investigation. Two, not to create a sense of impunity. I mean, you, you, you're not guilty, but you are inducted. Where investigation goes out. So I think the AG did well in that sense. But the question, sort of the IGP, now the, so it's sort of a matter of uh, condemning the, uh, the, the, accused, the, the alleged person, alleged, alleged case. But the issue of the American requesting um, uh, what do you call it? Requesting detention uh, yeah. prior to the tradition. Yeah. There is two issues. One is the question around perhaps intelligence or supposition that uh, Abakari could escape from justice. Now, there are two ways Nigeria should, and of course, the second are issue. Are we obliged to really obey that order? Well, we, two as things, a nation. Two things, yeah. It's a valid order of a court of the U.S., uh, and we have a lot of recognition. I used to be a member of the U.S. Nigeria National Commission. And part of our good relationship with the Americans is that we ordinarily ought to respect the decisions of that court, just like they ought to respect the decisions of the Nigerian court. Second issue is that Nigeria is fully committed to international you know, conventions around corruption, crime, it's a transfer, war against 419, which Nigeria is actually a leading fighter. So the Nigerian government ought to, but again, the question is, I think it's easy. Since there's a panel already set up by the IG, which means the IG thinks that that's a tribal issue, then the IG ought to probably take him into custody. So two things, Nigeria can assure the U.S. that we can handle this matter, we are putting him in custody. And that custody means he is facing investigation, but he's in protective custody. Okay. You want to avoid the imagined situation where he could escape from justice. So Nigeria can give that assurance, and I think the U.S. could be satisfied by that. But let's not forget, it's all about diplomatic relationship between countries, it's also about perception of risk and power, and, and issues around and then impunity, basically. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Samamad, it's a good place to leave that conversation. Or do I want us to really still look at that allure of worry? And a reflection, really. Political parties are having internal issues. Mm -hmm. And, of course, traditional institutions still battling theirs as well. But we'll move on.